You sail for the kingdom of Daggerfall. Just like with the first one, you're going to want to go to elderscrolls.com. Click on games, go down to Daggerfall, the Great Machine Awakens, go down here, click on download the full game. You're going to want to, if you don't already have DOSBox, you're going to want to download that right now. Otherwise, click on I accept. Open the zip file you downloaded and you're going to notice it's very different from the last game. This time, instead of using an installer, you're going to have to go ahead and extract these files to a folder. Preferably something easy to remember, easy to use, like C drive slash ES2D. It's going to take a little while to extract. Next, you're going to want to visit the folder that you installed DOSBox into. Go ahead and double click on DOSBox options. .bat, which is a batch file. It's going to go ahead and open up a notepad document. This document is the configuration file that DOSBox uses. And in a separate video, I'll explain a few tweaks you can do to make this document better. But for now, what you're going to want to do is the find file dialog by holding control and hitting F. Then type in MEM S-I-Z-E. You have to go down twice because the first is an example, then the second is the real thing. Mem size 16 is the default. You're going to want to go ahead and change that to 32. Then save and close the file. Next, you're going to want to mount the C drive. Basically, you're setting up the drive so that it knows how to use it. You type mount C space C drive. That's C colon backslash, then the directory, ES2D. Now before you hit enter, press space again, and you're going to want to type dash free size 1000, basically saying you've got enough free space on that drive for the game to run. Now it's almost ready. What you have to do now is you have to set up a CD-ROM drive. So, how you do this is you type mount D, and this is where it gets tricky. C drive ES2D, just like you did before, except another backslash afterward, followed by DFCD. That's the Daggerfall CD directory. Then put space dash T CD-ROM basically it's saying it's telling DOS this is a CD-ROM disk and that it's labeled that's dash L-A-B-E-L Daggerfall all of this has to be done exactly or it will not work now the D drive links into your Daggerfall CD directory after this is done change to your D drive by going D colon on the D drive, you're going to want to type install to install the game. Thank you for purchasing the Elder Scrolls Daggerfall. Before you install this software, you should take a look at the software license agreement contained in the user's manual. I agree to the terms. First, you're going to want to install the game to your hard drive. You may or may not have to alt tab out and alt tab back in in order to get it to work. Now, do not start installing it yet. Change the install size to huge. You want the entire game to be installed, none of it to run off the CD. Yes, the installation size is fine. It's going to ask if you want to install it on C Dagger. Go ahead and install the game there. Go ahead and install the game. You must choose a sound card to have sound effects and music during the game. Do you know what sound card you have? Are you ready to set up your sound card? Yes, you are. Auto detect. Let's detect. Sound Blaster 16? Okay. MIDI device must be selected. We must listen to terrible MIDIs. Hit okay. Done.
Installation is complete. All right, so now we're back in the DOS prompt, and now we need to update the game to the newest version. Yes, they actually patched. We need to type DAG213. This program will update Daggerfall to version 1.07213. I want to update now. As you see, it patches the game. The duplicate town names in the world, yes. We're going to fix maps. And done. Update is successful. Be able to type dagger and load the game. But wait, there's more. Every time you want to play the game, you open up DOSBox, you need to type in these commands in order, after which the game will start. Some point soon I'll put up a DOSBox video explaining how to have DOSBox do that for you every time you open it. To start your game, type Dagger. Obviously start a new game. The first thing you'll have to do is choose your province. Just like in the first game, you cannot choose an Imperial. In this case, we're going to go to Skyrim and be a Nord. abso fucking lootly female Nord, I highly recommend using the top option. The top option will allow you to create your own class, which is the best part of the Daggerfall experience. So it's going to give you a list just like it did in the original, except on the bottom, custom is now available. You're going to be able to add special advantages, special disadvantages, edit your reputations, assign your stats, and name your class. Now for the sake of expediency, I have made the most fucked up class possible. Do not play this. What you'll want to do is do not fast start. Instead, choose your character's career path by answering questions. Fast start does it automatically. Answering the questions gives you some control over what kind of character background you have. It's going to ask you what your reflexes are. Enemies are going to move slower with lower reflexes, and they're going to move faster with higher reflexes. But really, any average gamer who has played a first-person game like uh, Skyrim, for example, is used to very high already. The rate at which your character learns skills is influenced by all your choices, including this. Higher reflexes, better learning. So, makes the game harder, but at the same time, you level up faster. Not that hard for the average person. You'll be given the choice to restart the whole process from the beginning, or start the game. Hit the red button if you're ready to begin. Four hundred years after Tyrosep and his reign, Excuse the gloom. But you're not Patrick Stewart. Seriously, this is the same emperor who was in Oblivion. Except he got old, and apparently he grew hair. Daggerfall takes place in the Iliac Bay, a small section between Hammerfell and High Rock. Divided up into over 30 kingdoms, each has a place base larger than Oblivion or Skyrim. This is just one of the many kingdoms. Each dot is a fast travel location. And this is one of the cities inside of that kingdom. Each little shape is a building you can enter. It even includes a palace. The rest of the story is told to you in text. Got in a shipwreck, and then a mudslide sealed you in. It's gonna ask if you wanna do the tutorial. The tutorial is shit. Do not do it. The entire game is gonna be just as shitty as Arena. You're gonna be able to fix that though, because this game has a controls menu. Forward, W, reverse, S, S slide, left, A, slide right, D, jump, space bar. Activate center object, E. Once you get this all set up, you don't have to worry about that. Go to mouse. It's going to be the cursor. You're going to want to change that to view. Mouse sensitivity, way the fuck up there. 
The result? You now have mouse look. WASD works. You are playing something that resembles a modern game. If you hit L for your logbook, you're always going to see your current mission. Hitting the up and down arrows will allow you to change between quests. Hitting F5 brings up your character sheet. You're going to be able to hit your history, and it's actually going to tell you the story of your character as you wrote it by answering those questions. It may or may not reference the original arena as well. Primary skills are minor, major, Miscellaneous skills are the skills you did not choose, but they still exist and you can still raise them. Just a lot more slowly. Click on any of the stats to learn what they do and what kind of influence they have on your character currently. So here are some tips and tricks. Creating your character. If you pick the Somerset Isle at the beginning, the High Elves are immune to paralyze effects. Spiders, mages, and other baddies will normally put paralyze on you and then murder you while you're paralyzed. Not a High Elf. High Elves can actually take critical weakness to paralysis and still be unaffected by it, but can still get the bonus points toward their custom class. Don't be afraid to limit yourself and get class points. Custom classes can limit themselves, making certain types of armor, weapons, shields, whatever, forbidden. You can earn bonus points for taking negatives like forbidden armor, leather, or forbidden weapon axe. As you mess around with advantages, disadvantages, and health per level, you'll see a dagger on the side of your screen go up and down. The higher that dagger is, the harder it is to raise your skills, therefore your progression through the game is slower. You won't level super fast if it's low though, so take advantage and seek a balance between advantages and disadvantages to give you the edge in your game. Language skills are basically useless, don't bother with them, but if you do get a successful skill check in them, a monster may be non-hostile, and that's why. If you're going to be a mage, understand that your spells will cost too much in the beginning. Raising your skills should reduce the spell point cost. Eventually, through the Mage's Guild, you will be able to buy items that give you additional spell points. If you're going the path of a melee warrior, you're going to want to focus on just one weapon type. You can set the other weapon types to forbidden, and that'll give you some bonus points. But your chosen weapon type should be a primary skill. Also, Critical Strike should be a primary skill as well to help you deal massive damage when it rolls in your favor. You slash, you back up, you slash again, repeat. You want to dodge your enemy's attacks while landing your own. NPCs actually judge you based on your skills. If you don't take any magic skills, you will not be able to join the Mage's Guild. If you don't have Restoration, it's unlikely a temple will want you. Thief's skills for Thieves' Guild, and so on, so on. Swimming skill. Please, 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 you fucking need it. Take it as a minor skill. Without it... You will die in underwater segments of dungeons, period. You can make swimming a little easier by unequipping all your armor. Playing the game. When you get to the first big hallway in the first dungeon, there'll be a wooden door to the left. A flying imp will be inside. If you started with anything below steel, like wood or iron, walk past that door, sneak by it, because uh, you will be unable to kill it without steel. Now keep in mind the bandits further on have plenty of steel weapons, so you won't be fearing them forever. Join a knighthood. Daggerfall has knights of the dragon, other kingdoms have their own knighthoods. As a knight you will not be charged to sleep in an inn, provided that inn is in the kingdom you are a knight of. Buy a fucking cart. The instant you are able to buy one. If you can't buy one, then go to a city, go to the bank of Daggerfall, take out a loan and buy a cart. When you go to dungeons, you'll be able to go to the dungeon exit, click on yes to stay in the dungeon and access your wagon. Dump all of your loot there every once in a while. The loan will pay itself off in no time with all the loot you've gotten. When you go to dump your loot into your cart, make sure you've selected wagon prior to dumping all the loot, otherwise you'll find a pile of gear on the ground. It sucks. Gold is really heavy. Deposit gold in the bank and get letters of credit instead. They weigh practically nothing. Exactly the same weight for one gold or a million gold. You can't finish every quest. Don't let Daggerfall's procedurally generated quest system bother you. You will get quests that you will be unable to complete for one reason or another. Accept it, it's just part of the game. All procedurally generated quests are timed, so you can just wait off the timer, go to a different kingdom, enjoy quests over there for a while, and come on back after your log's been cleared of the quest. This applies to guilds, knighthoods, personal quests, 
uh, temples, all kinds of quests that are not the main quest line. The main story is safe and fully completable. I hope that this guide has helped you set up and be able to play The Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall, which I consider the best game in the Elder Scrolls series. Thank you.